Hello there. So the other day, Apple announced they would be releasing a brand new iPad, and I was so excited for it because I'm someone that loves to digitally paint on my iPad, on Procreate. I really, really enjoy doing it. I have done for a few years now, and my current iPad, I've had for probably two or three years, and I purchased it like I always did my Apple products. I purchased it refurbished because it's a few hundred dollars cheaper. You get the same one year warranty on it, and it's just a much smarter way to buy things cheaper. But as much as I love my current iPad, it is unfortunately, uh, it's on its way out, basically, and it's really difficult to do anything anymore. So I realized when they announced the new iPad, it was probably time for me to upgrade. So I've upgraded my iPad. Um, I'm very excited about it. I received it, and I looked at it, and I was like, wow, I'm so excited to paint on this thing. This this, this part, the part I'm not supposed to paint on, but the part that all the artsy YouTubers are painting on at the moment because that's a trend. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up to let me know. Um, I'm thinking about doing this on a laptop next time, so if that is something you would like to see, feel free to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment as to what you would like to see me paint on it. So for now, I think it's about time we get started. Let's go. Okay, so here we go, getting started, getting the camera angle right and set up, despite doing this for five years now, still can't seem to get it right, first try, but here we go, perfect. Now it's perfect, great. If you are wondering, by the way, why there is a strip of white on the back of this iPad, that's because I covered up the serial number. Uh, why? I don't really know, I just wasn't sure if I was supposed to or not. So here is a nice selection of paintbrushes that I will be using today, yep. Just, just throw them onto your new iPad, that's a good idea. These are the only ones I have left that aren't destroyed, like these ones. All nice and crusty and bent just the way they should be. And here's a nice beauty guru shot where you put your hand behind the product to show it, just in case you couldn't see the crustiness enough the first time. This one had powder flying off of it, so that was lovely as well. Here we have some tape, and I'm only gonna be painting on half of the iPad, so I only needed to cover the sides of half of it. So now I've applied the tape to the edges, I am ready to paint. And would you believe it, I actually opened this gesso before the video started, so I wouldn't actually make a mess everywhere like I always do with these containers, but uh, I didn't fully escape the mess. Um, because you see this little lovely flap here covered in paint. Remember that for later on. I put it down face up You'll see why this was an issue later on So when I paint on things like this I do it in a way that allows me to keep it if I want but also remove it easy enough If I want to remove it without ruining the item So I did not sand it down because I didn't want to scratch up the iPad And you know what? I might really hate what I paint and be stuck with it And I don't want to do that because if I try to take it off It would be all scratched up and I wouldn't like it So I just didn't want to take that risk So I just gessoed it up to help it stick to the surface better overall if I did want to keep it. I do have a question though for you super tech savvy people. Any idea what these little circles are? I was debating on what to do with them and what their purpose was so I ended up just painting around it but I wasn't really sure what to do. I then taped over it in the end but I didn't know if they were like important or what they were for. <laughs> painting around the Apple logo wasn't the easiest and I have a pretty steady, steady hand. I have a steady hand, okay. I have a pretty steady hand but even so it's not really steady enough to perfectly paint perfectly around it. I, I, I call this one a success because you can't see the little mistakes I made on camera so I can pretend that it's perfect when it's actually not. So now we have our beautiful snowy white Bob Ross mountain. We're going to move the iPad out of the way to show off my Bates Motel mug. But you can't see it because there's too much water in it so I'm going to pour some out. And now ta-da, isn't it beautiful? That red stuff is not paint. And here is the return of the iPad. Now remember when I told you to remember the flap from earlier on? Yeah. I put my iPad down on the flap. So here we go. We see Chloe wasting valuable resources. This was my last roll of paper towel and I can't get hold of any more. I can't get hold of Clorox or Lysol and I can't get hold of any more paper towels. Somebody tell me what to do. Skipping forward now to me with an almost completely completed sketch because apparently I forgot to record that part. But if you close your eyes and squint them just enough and look super close, you can see that I'm surprise, surprise, I'm painting Stitch. Go figure. For those of you who always ask, I'm using Liquitex Heavy Body acrylic because it's my favorite acrylic paint um the brushes are honestly who knows what they even are i just i just use whatever's there and isn't dry and hard and crusty so i know a lot of people always say stuff like why do youtube artists paint on apple products or weird things and i'd give a funny answer if I had one, but to be quite honest, from my personal perspective, I really enjoy it because I'm painting on something a bit different. I really enjoy painting on this smooth kind of surface and figuring out where to lay the art out on it. Uh, we always paint on canvases or paper and it's really just fun to kind of paint on something a bit more obscure. I do it in a way that it's not damaging what I'm painting on, it can be easily removed if need be, and I can just make it custom all my own, something that nobody else has, 
And at the end of the day, I bought it. I'm not damaging it and I enjoy doing it. Also, I probably managed to actually make a TikTok video out of this. Why do I care about TikTok? Honestly, I don't know. I'm crap at it, but I feel like I need to get on the trend uh, of going on TikTok, but it's not going well. I will tell you that. So I did actually do this on my phone once. I'll leave a link to it in the description in case you didn't see that, but I had a lot of people with mixed responses to that. Uh, most people enjoyed it. Some people said, why didn't you just paint on a phone case? But in all honesty, painting on a phone case isn't nearly as fun. Um, it's like people seem to get enjoyment out of watching you paint on things that you shouldn't normally paint on. Like normal people will not just get their iPad and think, oh, I'm gonna paint on this. So I think that's why people enjoy it, if that makes sense. And you know, normal people just don't paint on iPads, but it's okay. She's a YouTuber, it's okay, cause she can ruin it and I can watch it, but not be harming my own stuff. I think that's something to do with it. But sadly, the day Days of simple easy art videos just don't exist anymore unless you somehow like have a twist to it those videos just don't they just don't do well anymore and I know some of you just like really simple normal paintings but at the same time those videos just don't overall perform that well and while at the end of the day the views are not the be all and end all when you rely on views to an extent for your income when it's your job you do have to kind of adapt to the trends so I know some of you don't like this stuff some of you do but it's really what I have to do to adapt because I personally enjoy making videos like this. I know a lot of people enjoy watching them. So yeah, while I could paint on a phone case, I have way more fun painting on something people don't usually paint on. And it's like being a kid with crayons and a wall. The more you're told you're not allowed to do it, the more you want to do it. Okay, so as you can see so far, Stitch is getting pulled together. Um, he's still not quite done yet, but I did most of him with the acrylic paint and I decided that he wasn't really looking pulled together enough. So I ended up using some Posca markers. I used a little bit for the outline initially and then towards the end, you'll see that I actually used a lot of Posca markers to just outline pretty much everything. And I was happy enough with how Stitch came out. I kind of, the ducks, I probably, Mm, I don't know if I could do them again I would probably paint them with a paintbrush even though the details wouldn't be as easy to do because the Posca markers that I have are very very thick um, and the details on this were quite thin so I didn't get the exact effect I was looking for on the ducks but on Stitch I was very happy with how he turned out and um, I wanted to use a white highlight pen but for some reason I did not have a white Posca marker anywhere to be seen. I have clearly lost it. So I ended up having to use a few different Posca markers like I used a pale blue for Stitch. Um, I used uh, an orange. I used a pale orange to kind of highlight and I just basically used the Posca markers to make him look a little bit more cartoony than I'd initially planned. I wanted him to be a bit more painterly affected uh, but because I, of the size that I was making him and all of the little fine details I really needed to use the paint markers instead. By the way, I've actually been working with Thrillist recently. They are a kind of a food related uh, channel here on YouTube. They've been sending me mystery boxes of food items every week and I've had to make something creative out of it. Um, for example, a couple videos ago, I had to make Eminem the rapper out of Eminem's, like the food. And it was very difficult and very fun. I'll leave a link to their channel if you would like to see it. We've done three videos so far and it's just been a lot of fun. So do be sure to check it out. But I guess before I go, I should probably talk to you a little bit more about why I decided to paint this particular scene. Maybe you've not seen Lilo and Stitch. Maybe you've not seen it for a while. Uh, basically, he is sat holding the book, The Ugly Duckling, because Stitch feels left out because he's an alien that's just landed on planet Earth and he's still trying to learn how humans work. And he's like an evil experiment, but he doesn't want to be bad anymore. So he kind of sits in the forest and reads a book called The Ugly Duckling, we all know it, and he just kind of feels lost and he feels less alone when he reads this book. And I don't think in the actual scene he's surrounded by ducks, but it's been kind of an iconic picture with Stitch and the ducks because it's so meaningful. I love Lido and Stitch. And Stitch, I feel, is one of the most dynamic characters that goes through so many changes, more than any other Disney character, I personally believe. Um, and he's just also bloody adorable. Uh, so yeah, this is how it turned out. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video. And please help to give it a thumbs up as well because it really does help me out. Um, but yes, this is how it looks. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to make a few fixes and changes to it a little bit later on. But for now, this is how it looks. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know as well if you'd like to see me paint something more obscure next time. And yes, thank you so much for watching this video. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.